So, um, we're actually stepping back in time uh, a little bit here in, in terms of the history. Um, we are going to uh, 1459, I think, um, here. And a uh, fellow by the name of Leon Ballista Alberti invented a cipher disc. Um, actually, two discs. Um, and, and this is really akin, I, it was the first version of, what eventually be, you know, was given away in cereal boxes as a secret decoder ring. Um, you've got, uh, it's, it's basically the Caesar cipher. And uh, you've got an inner ring and an outer ring, and you, you, you know, uh, have your uh, pointer to set it to, you know, wherever you want to start, and then you start doing the, the decoding. It's, it's an aid, it's an assist, it's a mechanical assist in using a conventional cipher. There are other ways that you can use it, of course, but um, that, the, the point is uh, that we are now getting into um, devices, initially mechanical devices, uh, that are helping us with the, the encryption and the decryption. So this is, um, you know, the, the first of uh, our encryption machines, systems, crypto systems, uh, that we can use. Um, Thomas Jefferson, uh, much later, this is 1790, um, he had a ciphering device, uh, and it had uh, 26 um, uh, wheels on it. Again, <laughs> rotors uh, and discs uh, were... Mm, very important to ciphering devices for quite a long time. Um, interesting. Anyway, um, this was a stack of 26 disks, and that makes me strongly suspect that they were all just uh, the alphabet. Um, and you would, uh, uh, you know, you could uh, write it, uh, write your message by uh, swiveling the disks around and then just move the uh, a pointer around, and, and that gives you a fairly easy way to to encipher the thing. Now, it's possible that the disks themselves could have been scrambled. I, I very much regret the fact that I, I never got a chance um, to go to the uh, NSA's Crypto Museum uh, when they were still selling um, a, a version of this, a brass version of this. Um, but, uh, you know, so I don't know uh, whether it's just straight the alphabet or whether each disk is a scrambled alphabet. And, of course, if um, it was scrambled, then uh, changing the order of the disks would also change your encryption. So, um, you know, it could have been used in a variety of ways. But, once again, it's simply a, uh, a, a device that aids us with uh, the encryption and decryption, um, and, and again, you know, uh, some variations on the algorithm is, is possible here. Um, the, uh, now, at this time, encryption and decryption, they, these, these fancy systems um, were not necessarily what was most widely used. What was widely used, and, and this is as we get into the era of the telegraph, um, and uh, the use of code books, particularly by businesses. Um, code books uh, were um, used as much for saving money on sending messages via telegram as for keeping information secret, although, you know, if you didn't show people what your code book was, and yeah. Um, but uh, an awful lot of businesses would use the same code book because it was cheaper uh, to represent codes, because the codes uh, could stand for entire phrases. Um, and, uh, you know, even if you had to spell out uh, particular words one letter at a time, it was still overall cheaper using code books uh, when you were sending uh, telegrams. Um, the, uh, 
so there's there's that um uh, and and we'll come back to uh to codes uh codes were widely used i mean uh, really uh they were important um up to the the second world war uh in in many ways and uh well anyway um uh but back to the mechanical things um Hagelin machines were very interesting Hagelin machines uh <laughs> Interesting politically because uh, this company uh, sold uh, basically the same devices to both sides in the Second World War. Uh, there was this mechanical, again, rotor-based um, uh, encryption device uh, that was given to uh, infantry troops. It was portable. It, it could be carried around. You could uh, use it to uh, encipher messages and... and um, Anyway, uh, but they also, <laughs> the company was supported by the CIA in the years following the Second World War and into the 50s. Um, an awful lot of the Hagelin machines uh, were used, um, uh, and, and the, the sales were supported by the CIA. Um, <laughs> Mostly on on the basis of the fact that they knew how to break it. It wasn't particularly good encryption, um, and so uh, the CIA was happy to uh, support Hagelin's sales, knowing that anybody who was using their machines uh, they could break it. Uh, however, again, this is still the the rotor based stuff, uh, and uh, now with a, a bit of electronics added, um, and that is uh, really, again, the basis of the Enigma machine. Now, this is, was used as a big military secret during uh, the Second World War. And, uh, of course, in, in terms of computers and the history of computers, um, there was the um, uh, decryption of the uh, Enigma machine. Um, initially by Polish mathematicians, uh, and when Poland was invaded, they managed to escape and take this information to England. Uh, Turing then was able to use the mathematics and um, the uh, bombs that he had people make, uh, which were sort of a, a brute force attack because of variations that were added to the Enigma machines to increase its security um, and all kinds of interesting stuff there. Um, the Colossus machine that uh, was really more of a forerunner to a computer because it was going after um, the very sophisticated uh, rotor based machines that the German high command was using for their uh, strategic communications uh, rather than just simple communications with submarines and, and uh, uh, groups um, in the field. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, rotor-based machines. Oh, and it even, I mean, uh, the electronics were were added to, and the plug boards on the Enigma machine to make it more complicated, uh, make it uh, harder to break, and, and uh, that sort of thing. But, um, uh, you know, still... The idea is, you know, the, the plug boards were, were basically sort of, you know, how many rotations, uh, how many positions do we move the rotor and, and stuff like that. But um, it's, uh, you know, it's still based on this. And even the, uh, the Japanese purple machine was used on uh, telephone stepping switches, but telephone stepping switches are sort of rotor based anyways. So, uh, yeah, machines.